The Mallee country in northwestern Victoria, southwestern New South Wales and the South Australian Riverland provide some of the best remaining habitat for the Mallee fowl. It's in these large parks and reserves of the Mallee Belt where Mallee fowl have perhaps their best prospect for long-term survival. Unfortunately, these large conservation reserves tend to be representative of the less fertile sands and not areas of tall and diverse Mallee which were possibly the best habitat for Mallee fowl. Mallee fowl are one of about 20 species of birds in a family known as megapodes, literally meaning big foot. This family is unique amongst birds in that they incubate their eggs by burying them in warm sand or leaf litter, rather than by the use of body heat. Only three megapodes occur in Australia. The orange-footed scrub fowl, found along our northern coasts, the brush turkey of eastern Australia, and the mallee fowl from the dry mallee. In fact, mallee fowl are the only species of megapode to be found outside the tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Mallee fowl once occupied a vast area across southern and central Australia. Since European settlement, both their range and abundance have declined alarmingly, as suitable habitat was cleared or otherwise modified. Mallee fowl are now classified as vulnerable nationally and endangered in some states. The building and maintenance of a large nest where eggs are incubated occupies a pair of mallee fowl for up to 11 months of each year. The male bird regulates the temperature of the nest's egg chamber by opening and closing the mound on an almost daily basis. Incredibly, mallee fowl seem to show little interest in their offspring. Once hatched, the well-developed chicks are self-reliant, able to feed and instinctively camouflage themselves for protection. The species have special significance for people living in the Mallee country. Archie Van is a member of the Sunraysia Mallee Fowl Preservation Society. Yeah, I'm reasonably concerned for the uh, welfare of Mallee Fowl in the future. Uh, we've done a lot of work on them and a lot of research, but there's still a lot we do not know about. And uh, for the Mallee Fowl to succeed in the future, we will have to do a lot more uh, scientific work. Over the last decade, there's been an intense program of monitoring of Mallee fowl nesting activity. The aim of monitoring is to detect any long-term trends in Mallee fowl abundance and to isolate any factors which might be causing a change in numbers. In some years, a proportion of the adult Mallee fowl population elects not to breed. Short-term changes in the level of nesting activity can be influenced by rainfall and food availability. Relatively dry conditions were experienced in the latter half of the 1990s, coinciding with a decline in nesting activity. Data has confirmed that a decline in nesting activity was associated with below average rainfall in recent years. This suggests nesting activity should increase with higher seasonal rains. The introduced fox presents another threat to mallee fowl. Foxes are opportunistic feeders. They're known to prey upon eggs, chicks and adult birds. These images of a fox eating eggs within a nest were obtained by means of a remote surveillance camera. Although mallee fowl have coexisted with the introduced fox for over 100 years, it's still unclear to what degree they affect mallee fowl numbers. Any reduction of chicks by fox predation may not be immediately obvious as the number of active nests may not initially decrease due to the relatively long life of the remaining adult birds. It's not known what proportion of chicks survive to breeding age, which is thought to be from two to five years. Wherever foxes are found, so too are rabbits. Rabbit Calicivirus disease, commonly known as RCD, spread to the Mallee in 1996, causing the rabbit population to collapse. Fox abundance also declined, but at a much slower rate, causing concern about increased predation of mallee fowl eggs and chicks during this lag period. The level of egg loss from mallee fowl nests has been closely monitored to detect any evidence of so-called prey switching by foxes. Paul Burton is licensed to conduct mallee fowl research on behalf of Parks Victoria. Foxes have been known to take mallee fowl eggs and because the rabbit numbers have dropped, we feel that there was a chance that they were taking more mallee fowl. 
and we have found that that is actually the case in these nests. We found that about 40% of them are being taken by foxes, which is a very high level and the highest that's been recorded. We've also been studying the rabbits in the area, and there's no doubt that the rabbits sort of over the back of this area have declined remarkably. Investigations were conducted into the loss of malifowl eggs following the initial myxomatosis outbreak in the 1950s, and again in the three years following the arrival of RCD. Both these studies found a high level of egg loss. More than a third of eggs were taken by foxes. It appears, however, that the level of egg loss following such events may return to a relatively low level once a balance between rabbits and fox numbers are restored. Not only do malifowl have to contend with fox predation, but there are other pressures which need to be addressed in the management of our national parks. Stock grazing has been phased out within national parks and reserves, where there is now no legal grazing. Feral goats remain a problem in some areas, particularly where they find water in remnant catchment dams. Action has been taken to close the dams in some of the larger parks. Goats are also being controlled by shooting, trapping and mustering. Despite these pressures, malifowl are well adapted to their semi-arid environment. This includes coping with periodical fires. Available evidence suggests that malifowl prefer long unburnt mallee vegetation and that they are rare or absent for at least 10 to 15 years following an intense wildfire. The advent of a large fire, burning the whole of a park or reserve, would be disastrous for most birds. However, there is also evidence that low intensity fires, which leave a mosaic of burnt and unburnt patches, can lead to an increase in malifowl nesting activity. Future research may help with these unanswered questions. There is a strong case for adaptive management trials, which will allow the risks posed to malifowl by foxes or current fire regimes to be properly evaluated. This is the next challenge in the conservation of this icon of the Mallee.